a station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good afternoon and thanks for joining us for DC News Now at 4. Here's a look at today's top stories all across the DMV. Lingering across portions of the area and on top of that we have storms that are slowly working their way into the picture. We'll time out all of that coming up in a check of your forecast in just a bit. Plus another shooting near the campus of Catholic University in the district. Students there telling us they don't feel safe anymore. How leaders are responding to the recent violence. And introducing young girls in the DMV to the world of tech, how one organization is closing gaps in the field by teaching the basics of coding. We're going inside the Black Girls Code Summer Camp in the district. And thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. For DC News Now at 4, I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. We'll get to those top stories in just a few minutes, but first we want to start with a look outside on yet another Hazy Tuesday afternoon, but good news is it's clearing up a bit. Right. Well, let's head over now to meteorologist Damon Madsen with the first look at the forecast. So, Damon, there is some good news in the forecast. Yeah, I mean, that live shot right there just tells the story. We weren't really able to see much past the buildings there in Roslyn yesterday, but now we're starting to see out into that horizon a little bit more. So, yes, the air is not totally clear, as indicated by this map here of our air quality, all of these yellows still showing that we do have some particles in the air dropping that air quality so it's not that totally clear but we are seeing that steady improvement and we will continue to see that as we go forward here toward the middle and second half of the week. Here we are though, those air quality alerts still stretch across pretty much mostly all of Maryland and then into the DC metro area, including surrounding counties in Virginia. This air quality alert goes through today. We have not seen another one issued for tomorrow just yet, but again, it's something we'll keep an eye on as we move ahead. Now, for the most part, the radar has been clear this afternoon. That's a little bit of a change, but as we go more toward the evening, we are expecting to see some activity begin to spark up back across the western mountains, and that is the activity that will slowly move across the area the rest of the day into the night tonight. It's going to be very isolated activity, so a large majority of us won't see rainfall, but the chance certainly is there. It's something we'll watch out for as we head into your Tuesday night and even as we head toward Wednesday morning as well. Now this round of storms is the start of a little bit more of an active pattern. When are we expecting additional showers and storms Wednesday and also Thursday? We'll have a full check of that forecast in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Well, DC's Department of Energy and Environment is asking you to look out for signs of heat stroke. These include no sweating, a fast, strong pulse, altered mental state, a throbbing headache, and loss of consciousness. If you're experiencing any of those symptoms, you're asked to call 911 immediately, or you can have someone take you to the hospital. Well, DC police have identified the person shot and killed last night near Catholic University's 44-year-old Robert Lavender of Southeast D.C. Yeah, the shooting took place near the intersection of Monroe Street and 7th Street in Northeast Washington. Now, this is the second homicide at or near the campus in two weeks and the third violent attack this month. Yeah, D.C. News Now's Dave Laval joins us from the scene of last night's homicide. Dave, what are you learning? Good afternoon, Mark and Annalisa. This is part of the Brookland community in Ward 5. The ward has seen 402 more violent crimes this year compared to the same time a year ago. That's according to DC police. People we spoke to told us they're scared. It's a little nerve wracking being a student here. But Catholic University's Emily D has even more reason to feel that way. Someone shot and killed Robert Lavender of Southeast DC Monday night near the intersection of Monroe Street and 7th Street Northeast. I was basically in the lobby of my apartment when it happened and then I went up and I could see everything from the window. It's pretty scary. Joe Marini is another university student. It's definitely a little, a little scary, yeah, especially living down the street in a house with like a bunch of guys, not in a great area, but uh, 
Hopefully they can do something to take care of it soon. Monday night's homicide is the second near or at campus this month. Kentucky teacher Maxwell Emerson died after DC police claimed 22 year old Jamie Maceo shot him during an on campus fight July 5th while Emerson visited campus. Maceo remains in custody. Then last Thursday, the university announced several people attacked a recent graduate as he walked from the metro station to his off campus home. Since Emerson's death, university administrators have armed more of their public safety officers and hired extra security guards to patrol the campus and its perimeter. I know that the university is doing everything they can to keep everyone safe. Now, following last night's homicide, administrators have made emergency requests of uh, DC police of the from the fourth and the fifth districts to discuss the recent violence here around the campus area. We're live in the Brookland neighborhood. Dave Laval, DC News Now. All right, David, thank you. And DC's newly appointed police chief Pamela Smith has her hands full with rising crime in the nation's capital. Police all around the district want the new chief to act and quickly to help slow down the violence. Our political and government reporter Leonard N. Fleming spent the day in Northeast DC talking to people experiencing violent crime almost daily. And Leonard, what do they want from the new chief? Well, Mark, that list is long, but in essence, people told me they are weary and overwhelmed. They want the new chief to increase police presence and cops out of their cars interacting with the community. Neighbors tell me they've watched police numbers dwindle for years, so many are pessimistic. Ward 8, where the acting chief Pamela Smith lives there, have been 248 homicides with more than 1,350 assaults with a dangerous weapon in the past three years, according to police data. And near the corner of Minnesota and Dix, shooting after shooting has occurred, including a targeting sh targeted shooting at an April funeral in Northeast D.C. Deborah Wilkins Bay left her home of 10 years not far from that shooting because of the violence. Um, I was in the house one day on a day like today and all of the children were outside, my children uh, and several of the neighbor's children and all of a sudden gunshots rung out. And so immediately I was terrified because my children were outside playing. It was definitely the final straw. I have asked MT MPD officials to comment on how police officials plan to address concerns from people like Deborah Wilkins Bay have raised, but uh, hopefully we'll hear back soon so that I can get that response to you. Reporting from the studio, Leonard N. Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. Leonard, I have to ask you, do people in that area feel like that they will ever see relief from crime? Mark, that's a good question. They recognize that these are long-standing problems and that good policing isn't, isn't the only answer. But they say a larger police presence does, in the end, deter crime, and that's what they want to see their police chief focus on. Guys? All right, Leonard, thank you. And coming up in our next half hour, we're going to hear more from the chairman of D.C.'s police union. He spoke with me about the significance of Smith's nomination and what it means for the department with crime on the rise. All right, Mark. Well, happening right now, Montgomery County leaders are trying to find a compromise when it comes to stabilizing rent in the county. Now, the council is set to vote on two bills. One is called the Home Act bill, which would cap rent increases at 3% over inflation. The other bill is called the anti-gouging bill, which would cap hikes at over right to over percent over inflation there. Uh, we have a team at the hearing. We'll have more on this story coming up on DC News Now at 5. Well, Virginia's DMV will now let people indicate their blood type on driver's licenses and state IDs. Residents can self-certify their blood type when it's time for renewal or to replace their ID. An icon will, be, will appear on the front of it. The information will be used to help first responders in emergency situations. Well, right now, parents of the DMV are struggling with the, comes the cost of uh, how expensive it is, it is to raise kids. Our sneaker Grimshaw gives us a look at really how child care costs here at home stack up to other areas across the country.
Yeah, that's right. New research shows Washington, D.C. is the most expensive place in the country to raise a toddler. That's according to a report from the Annie E. Casey Foundation, and that report found the annual cost for center-based toddler care in D.C. is almost $25,000. That's more than 70 percent of the median income of single mothers in the city. Looking at the rest of the DMV, annual costs are just over 11000 in both Maryland and Virginia. West Virginia ranked as the cheapest state in our region with costs just under $8,000. Now, meantime, that foundation is also urging lawmakers to take action against rising costs. They are calling on federal, state, and local governments to invest more money into child care. Advocates also say public officials and private providers should work together to improve infrastructure for home-based child care. There are also calls for Congress to expand the child care Access means parents in school program, which supports child care services for parents getting an education. In the studio, Shanika Grimshaw, DC News Now.